Hello everybody, my name is Detention, and today we're going to be doing the matchup portion of my Zoe guide. And in this portion is collaboration with a YouTuber slash streamer named Cupic. Cupic, say hi. Hi. Cupic is a 800 LP challenger player, but he actually decayed today or yesterday. So, but he's a really, really, really good Zoe player. Um, he means Lux, but um, you guys should check him out. He's really cool. We made this list together and also we're going to go through like the... How the matchup should work, how everything goes, the runes, the sums, the items, and yeah. Um, okay, so how the way this guide is being set up is there, there's gonna be five. I yeah, there's gonna be five different parts. Um, I already did the animation cancel one on my channel, and uh, the matchup items and tips for the matchup is this one, and then how to play Zoe early to mid game, late game Zoe, and team fight against Sieging is gonna be within like a week or so. So yeah, now on to the tier list. Okay, so the way we did this tier list, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, stuff is weird. As in like, I changed a lot of champs. Um, we made a very easy matchup. I mean, we did very easy winning matchup, skill matchup, enemy favorite matchup, losing matchup, hard counter or minus three OP, which means you should dodge. Um, okay, now we're gonna start off with uh, very easy and we're gonna go to pike so um me and cupic both for this page we both pretty much have the same thing but the difference between mine and his is he has um domination and i have sorcery i mean i have a uh, inspiration um it doesn't really do much difference but cupic really likes the healing from domination and i understand that um and I just like free boots in the CDR. I think it's really nice. And uh, now for like tips on the matchup, what do you, do you have any tips? Cupid? Um, I just want to say, I also like getting boots fairly on in this matchup to help yeah. dodge the hook. Agreed. How can you say, you have magical footwear? <laughs> well, no, I'm saying like upgraded boots, like if I can. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, For this matchup, I like to auto him a lot, stand behind minions so he doesn't get his hooks off um if he ease you and it looks like it's gonna miss be careful and like preemptively flash it if you think he's getting a jungle gank because if he's being forward he's most probably likely going to flash to confirm the yeah hit. agreed and also another thing with pike is um i wouldn't use bubble at, like i would barely use bubble in this lane because Pike just can sustain all of your damage because of his passive, so you need to... Like, you can harass him a lot. Just harass him with Qs and autos. Don't use bubble unless you know you can kill. Because um, you don't want to waste your mana. Yeah, you don't want to waste your mana. And also, um, if Pike is looking for a hook, when he hooks you, you can R right when it hits you, and you don't get hooked. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much... Pike's matchup's pretty simple. Oh, also, you can use uh, Hurl to dodge his R. That's another thing you can do if you have good reactions. Um, yeah, also for build wise, it's just like Ludens. Um, Cupic really likes Lichbane. He goes Ludens Lich pretty much every game. Um, I think that's just because that's his playstyle. And like we both have different playstyles, but for this matchup, I would probably just go like Ludens into like Rob a Lich or Ludens Rob a another item. But I mean, we both get Lichbane. We just do it in a different order. Pretty much. Do you have anything else to say for Pike? No. Nope. But yeah, so that's the Pike matchup. Now on to Cho. Um, Cho is pretty pretty easy. I think the only thing that is annoying is when Zoe casts her Q, she walks in like a linear line, so Cho'Gath can like hit you with a Q. And if Cho'Gath hits you with Q, he actually can like just walk up to you and kill you. He can walk up to you, silence you, W, and uh, it's pretty bad. Um, and even if you get hit by, if you hit him with a sleep, like, you have to be careful when you're walking up to him to hit your Q because before he falls asleep and he's drowsied, he can Q you or he can silence you and you just won't be able to hit him and you'll take a bunch of damage, so. Yeah. And another thing is, don't, don't be fooled by, like, like, you can waste your mana but like Choga sustain is actually really, really, really annoying. Like he heals a lot from creeps. So I think if you get like a jungler to come mid and just kill him, he's pretty easy to die. 
And that's pretty much it. Also, me and Cubic Surgeons are pretty much the same. Only thing that's different is Taste of Blood, Ravenous. Um, you're pretty much going to see the running theme of that. Cubic takes the room, same room page pretty much every game. Yeah, but... I take the same room page every single game because it just fits my play style. I don't like Electric Cube. I like Aerie. Yeah. Um, his, he's more of like a hedge slash auto weaving play style. And mine is like, um, it's like specific for that game. So, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it for Cho'Gath. I mean, there's not much. It's just Chell. <laughs> it's not really complicated. Just watch out for his Q. Um, also, when you're opening with, when you're playing against Cho'Gath and you are forwards to bubble him, definitely be careful because he can just silence you and then into a Q. So make sure you're not in range of his silence when you ult forwards, which is really good. Because then, yeah, like I said, he can just silence you and then Q and then ult you and you die. Um, okay, next. Nunu! So, Cubic told me that he doesn't really have any any experience in this matchup. He hasn't played against it yet. Um, but for me... But it's a pretty new thing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty new. It's, like, really, really, really new. Um, like, yet again, our runes is pretty much the same. Only thing that's different is Magical Footwear Cosmic Insight. And um, this matchup, all you have to be wary of is he can never kill you. Like, literally ever. But he shoves really fast and roams. So in this matchup, all you have to do is just spam ping your teammates and make sure that you can tell your teammates when this champ is roaming because he can get really obnoxious and just roam all around the map. And he shoves you in really hard. Just remember when you get like two items, you outscale. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the new matchup. And also when you're in lane, just harass the fuck out of him if you can with a uh, cube. And also don't get baited by his... Uh, like, if he gets low and there's creeps near you, he can just consume a creep and just gain, like, 300 HP. Because if Nunu's below 40% HP, the heal is doubled. So you have to be careful about that. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the Nunu matchup. Now on to Lissandra. Um, so, my old Lissandra guy, and I'm pretty sure I had electrocute into this. But I, I realized that I really like Aerie a lot, because I can just harass her a lot. Um, do you have anything... You want to say? Um, is pretty easy to poke. If you have cleanse, this matchup's pretty straightforward. Don't get hit by her Qs. Um, don't get all in. Yeah. Poke her with your autos and Q autos, and you kind of just win because you outrange her. Yeah. Also, she... very weak to mages. Agree. And also, if you see her use claw, you have like a twenty second window to kill her. So. And also, if you see Lissandra using Claw, like, randomly, you're probably getting ganked. So, you have to be worried about that. Um, next is... And also, our runes is just different. Yet again, mine's on the top, cubics are on the bottom. Um, next is... Morgana. Um, Morgana... I don't really see Morgana mid that often. I know Cupid plays Morgana. So, um, I think when it comes to, like, dueling her, you want to open up with a Q instead of opening up with sleep because she can just spell shield it, right? Yeah, and also, you you can all in her, but you, you for this matchup, I like to poke her down with um, Qs and auto attacks because Morgana's auto range is, like, only 400, like, 50, so she cannot fight you back with auto attacks. She's going to hard shove you as soon as she hits five. But before that, that window of one to five, you can like hard harass her and she yeah. cannot do anything about it because she yeah. has no range at all. Also, also, when she goes for minion dematerializer stacks, you should look to harass her because normally Morgana mids go diamat. Um, also, the difference between me and Cupic's page is I just go cleanse, he goes ignite. Uh, Cupic is a Giga Chad, see way out, so I can get out of my jungle, and I'm a turbo version when it comes to, when it comes to CC champion, so. I mean, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much the Morgana matchup. Um, next on to a more vol volatile champion, which is Cat. Um, by the way, we're still in very easy matchups. Um, when we get to winning matchups, we'll tell you. Um, so, Katarina is a champ that is extremely, extremely, extremely volatile. We put her easy because you can harass her out. But if this champ gets one or two kills early, it's pretty fucked. It's pretty one-sided. 
But if you play it really properly or take barrier or like be safe, then uh, she can't really do anything. You just like asphyxiate her. She can't roam. She can't do much. Uh, do you have any? Other it's really easy to poke her down because um, she's a melee champion. If yeah. she all ends you, and you can literally just barrier her, her first bubble her, and if she has. Ignite on the floor, you can literally take her ignite and kill her. Like she's very easy to kill. Yeah. Like I don't think you should ever really die to cat on your own unless she's already gotten ahead from some other source. Yeah. Or like the only reason why you should be dying to cat is if she hit level three first. Or you don't have bubble yet. Which is even then you can still usually run away by using well, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So you also have to realize like if you're scared, if she's jumping onto you, you can literally just use a summoner and run away. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then now on to the easiest, very easy matchup, which is Bran. Um, this is where me and Cupic's page differs a lot. Cupic does not like Electric, like you said. Um, I like one-shotting people, and I think proto-canceling into Bran is like, you just farm him. He's super easy. To go, um, you just go Ludens Proto or Proto Ludens in this matchup, in my opinion. But Cupid goes Lich Ludens, a uh, Lich, I mean Ludens Lich every single game. Um, so yeah, I mean for Brand, the only thing you'd have to worry about is if he has, um, if you are forwards, he can just E and then Q you for free into a W. And also make sure when you're playing against Brand, when he, uh, Pillar of Flames the wave, he can Conflagration, which is his E to uh, you and then stun you. So like, make sure you're not staying next to creeps because it can spread to you. And that's pretty that's pretty much the brand matchup. It's not that hard. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Very simple. Yeah. He's not a good champion to play. So. Yeah, he's, he's pretty bad. <laughs> okay, now on to winning matchups. Now winning matchups is, it's a little bit more tricky than very easy, but if you, f if you fuck up, then it's probably like, you can still come back from it. There's no, like, oh, it's doomed. Uh, first one on the list is Corky. Um, me and Cupid got the same page. Uh, Corky is a type of champion that if you kill him, it's low-key kind of, like, Cassidy. You can farm him a lot early, but if he can get, if he gets one or two items, he actually starts becoming, like, really scary. Like, really, really scary. His damage becomes really high. Um... One thing to note is Corky is a tenacity user because he can go into uh, the precision tree. He also goes like he can go also go uh, Mercs cleanse, which is really irritating. Um, a thing to note is when Corky picks up package, just make sure you can ping your teammates when he's roaming. Um, other than that, Corky's pretty simple. You can harass him in lane. Uh, Valkyrie is a really long cooldown, so what you want to do is you want to R forwards and bait his Valkyrie. And then look for a bubble. Um, never open with bubble because he's just gonna use W, which is Valkyrie. Do you have anything else? Um, if he if you're going for Q and he Qs where you're gonna watch, you can literally you you shouldn't go for your Q because you just take free poke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing that applies with like most champs that have like a a thing that's like an area they put on the you ground. You just don't want to walk in it. Yeah, you don't want to walk in it. Um. Yeah, runes, same thing. Um, pretty much the same. Also, um, items. It's pretty much Ludens, Ludens Lich Raba or Ludens Raba Lich, doesn't matter. In that order. So, uh, yeah, on to the next one, which is Pantheon. Pantheon, for low elo players, you're probably like, why did I put him here? He's so, like, um, cancer. He's not very fun to play against. But I feel like Pantheon. If, if you play it well, Pantheon can't really do anything. And if he, stun if he goes for a W, you just E him and it's a free kill. Because what you can do is you can, when he uses his uh, shield, you are behind him and you can hit him. So that's like my like advice on the matchup. And when he goes for a stun, once you bubble him, you don't pop the bubble immediately with your Q. Let the minions hit him and like wear him down because minions early do game lot. do a lot and if you sleep him in a minion wave it should be a free kill yeah because most pantheons when they look for a stun it's usually in your own minion wave 
so. Yeah, I'll agree. I mean, that's pretty much the Pantheon matchup. Also, when he hits six, you should make sure to ping your, like I said, ping your teammates if he roams. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Now on to Ari. Now, Ari actually does low-key counter Zoe, but um, it is greatly dependent on how good the Ari is. Like, if she's really bad or like even, and you're a good Zoe player, you're probably going to win. Um, the Ari matchup is very, very, very straightforward. You win pretty much at every stage. Um, also, when you're throwing your Q back and forwards, like I said, she's gonna try to, when you're walking to land Q, she's gonna try to uh, charm you. Make sure you, because when you're casting Q, you can actually strafe while your Q is in midair. People don't really notice that or know that. So when you cast Q, make sure you can dodge her charm. And also, when you are forwards, she's probably look for a, a charm. Um, and in this matchup specifically, you can Q auto her a lot. You don't even need to hit your Q. Just the empowered autos against Ari, she doesn't have much she can do against you. Yeah. And then items this game, pretty much the same. Same thing as always. It's just uh, Ludens, Ludens, Lich, Raba are just uh, Ludens, Raba, Lich. Um, next one is Lucian. Now, this matchup... I take very, very, very defensive runes. Cupid is a Giga Chad and goes airy like a psychopath. But I have to take Taste of Blood Timer or, or Barrier or Heal in this matchup because it's very, very, very annoying for me. Um, just personally, I really struggle against Lucian. Um, I just feel like he just wins. He beats Zoe until like, a, like if you get a little bit of a lead, then you'll start winning like really hard. But Lucian, if you take Barrier, or heal, Lucian will never kill you. Um, Basically, you just want to play this lane until he starts falling off. So after you get your first item and after he gets his, as long as he's not too ahead, he'll just fall off. And you'll, yeah. you should win the game. Yeah, and also um, make sure you don't you don't want to use bubble until he dashes. Or you want to R4 is bait his dash and then bubble. That's like a really, really, really good tip. Um, for that. Same thing, build as always. You can go Seekers in this matchup if you really struggle. But um, I think just um, Ludens, like I said, Ludens, Raba, Lich, or just Ludens, Lich, Raba. Um, yep, it's pretty much that. Lucian matchup is pretty straightforward. Now into Akali. Um, uh, in my opinion, Akali is actually kind of tricky. She's, she's it, it, uh, Zoe wins it pretty hard, but it's the same thing as Cat, where if she gets Gunblade really early, it's actually really, really, really cancer to deal with. Um, and also, Akali is a chastity user, and also Akali can go cleanse. So it's very frustrating. Um, also, Shroud is 20 seconds at all ranks. So make sure you can keep tra uh, keep tabs on her Shroud. And also, if she goes for um, her, sh her E, it's a free sleep. So you want to R forwards, bait her E or bait her R, and then look for a sleep. Um, Once she slept, even if she's in her shroud, it still shows where she is. Yeah, you can still see where she is in her shroud. Um, yeah, it's... Just stay out of her Q range and hit her with your own Qs and auto attacks. Yeah, agree. It's easy to harass an Akali. Yeah. Very easy. I think you should respect her level 6, though. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, if you have Barry, you don't really have to respect your level 6. Yeah. It just depends on your playstyle. Also, our runes are pretty much the same. One thing that's different, like I said, is <coughs> Taste of Blood, Ravenous, uh, Magical Footwork, Cosmic Insight. That's pretty much the only thing that's different. Uh, items are pretty much the same. Ludens, Rava Lich, or Ludens Lich Rava. Next matchup. Wait, do you have anything else? Nope. Okay. Next matchup, Soraka. Now, I didn't put Soraka here last time. But ever since now in high low, there's a couple of Soraka mid players. Um, so I'm going to put this here just in case if you guys play against Soraka. I think Soraka is deceptively very, very hard to kill. Um, if I think the only thing that you should care about in this matchup is shoving the lane so you can roam because Soraka is not very good at shoving. But make sure if you get hit by a Soraka queue, you're griefing because it gives her like 100 HP back. So you can actually get baited really, really, really hard by Raka. Like you'll go for like a sleep all in 
and she'll level like one HP and then R and then Q and then heal. And uh, yeah, just be, just be, don't get baited by Soraka. Cause that's like all she pretty much does. And yeah, you just want to shove her in and look for roams. Do you have anything else? No, you can poke her too. Yeah. Just make sure you don't get hit by Qs. Yeah. Also don't, don't use bubble that much in this matchup. You're going to go, ooh, the Soraka Q is cheaper than Zoe Q. Okay, on to Silas. Also, all these are winning matchups. Um, so Silas. Um, Silas is pretty straightforward. Like, Zoe just shoves him in really hard, harasses him. Silas is kind of like Kiana, but an easier version to deal with, if that makes sense. Um, I think one thing to note is that uh, if he steals your R, pretty much does absolutely nothing. Also, if he... Uh, goes in with E or W, it's a free bubble. Um, he's a very easy to harass. Yeah, he's, he's really, really you, easy. You, you win this matchup pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think um, the thing that can separate a good Silas player from a bad one is if they can go Mercs, or if they're not greedy, because most Silas go Teleport or Ignite. If they go Cleanse, he probably could kill you. Maybe. If he gets like a jungler help. But once once Silas gets a couple items, um, I'm pretty sure you can just dual Zoe if he has like a lot of MR. But other than that, just harass him and he won't be a problem in lane. And also shove him in really hard. And a good tip, if you're ever, any matchup where you shove in, you need to get good vision early. Like really good vision. Because if you draw attention mid lane, you're out, you're gonna get gammed. So do you have anything else? Uh, and this matchup, I personally do not shove. Oh, you freeze? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, for, are you freezing because of the jungler? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Both can work, too. I think both play styles are fine. Freezing more or less chokes him out. Shoving, because to preface this, Cupic really, really, really likes lane kingdoming. That's, like, his thing. Um, personally, I think... Like, uh, shoving is fine, but the thing is that it also gives Silas farm, but if you freeze mid, then it denies Silas farm, so it's probably better to actually freeze. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the Silas matchup. And I'm just gonna put this in, like, a disclaimer or a description of the video of this video. Every single champion pretty much has the same build, except for, like, two. It's just Ludens, Rob, a Ledge. <laughs> Every game. Um... That was pretty much this one. Now on to a new person that's been popping up is Kogma and his new little skin. It's so cute. Um, Kogma is, it's a winning lane for Zoe, but he's hella annoying. Like he just, all he does is shove, like farm. He's just a very hard scaling mage and you should watch out for um, really scary all-ins. Not all-ins, but like, he deceptively deals a high amount of damage, so you guys should watch out for that. Um, do you have anything else? Um, he does outscale you, so you have you should have a lead against him. It's quite easy to get a lead against him, and um, he's Kogma is very easy to kill. He's like an ADC, like he's yeah. easy. So, just keep that in mind. Make sure you definitely kill him. Uh, you cannot rotate him too, because you you actually have a stronger shove early. Yeah. So if there's any jungle fights, you should be making it there first. Yeah, I agree. I think Kogma is pretty straightforward. Just if you can get Kogma to get ganked, it's really good. It sets him behind. Um, next champion we're gonna go into is Nico. Um, Nico's st we're still in winning matchups, guys. Um, we have not left skill matchup. I mean, we haven't lost left winning matchup. So. Nico is pretty, honestly, it just depends on who's playing Nico. Cause honestly, no flame to NA, but most Nico players are pretty shit. <laughs> so um, it's probably a free matchup, but just be wary of when you are forward, she can just snare you into a, a blooming burst into pop blossom, which is her ult. So she can just EQR. So be wary of that. Um, you outscale the living shit out of this champ, so I don't think you should be worried. Only thing that's kind of tricky is the fact that she has CC, so if you 
if you don't like have good warding early, she could just like flash snare you or force your flash or something. Um, oh, also you can ult out of her ults. That's a good thing. Everything else? No, not much for this matchup. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You just harass her with uh, like hedging and queuing and just auto her. And also, um, when you get hit by her Q, do not stay in it. Or also, when you're pressing Q, she's going to look to hit you with her E, her snare, because you walk in a straight line. So just be careful of that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Next champ is Gragas. Now, I originally wasn't going to put this on the list, but um, Cupid was like, you should put it on the list, so I did. Um, then again, her runes are very, very much the same. Um... I don't really play against Gragas that much. I think neither do I. But yeah. there are a few people who play him. Yeah, but I think one thing is that Gragas's damage is actually really, really high. People don't know that. Um, he can actually kind of like you can harass him, but level three he'll look to like poke you with like face rush and stuff and then run away. And the way Gragas' E works is if you don't preemptively uh, sleep him, you're like stunned for like a split second right after he E's you. So you can't really hit him because he'll have phase rush. Um, also be wary for him uh, ulting you into your tower, uh, into his tower if you shove him in. And uh, oh, also make sure when you burst in Gragas, make sure you wait for his W buff to expire. Because when, when Gragas presses W, he gains damage reduction. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Gragas matchup. All you want to do is cross, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to the last person of the winning matchups is Swain. Now, as of making this video, Swain has buffs on this PBE. Um, they're making him, I think, back into a mid laner. Swain is pretty pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Honestly, he's just all around really weak. Um, he just doesn't have that much damage. He's really easy to harass. His mana costs are really high. Um, the only thing that I'd be scared about is when you're shoving him in, let's say if you Q, your Q is 600 radius around you, so he gets a free, he can get a free E off, and if you get ganked, you're pretty much dead, unless you have flash. Um, so yeah, just be careful of gank setups with Swain. And also, uh, just try shoving him in if you want. Or you can freeze, doesn't matter. If you're going for a Q and he throws out the E like the tension was saying, you you should not go for your Q. Just make it miss. Yeah. So don't get rooted. Yeah. Okay, now on to skill matchups. Skill matchups is where it's just pure skill. Whoever is better will win. Um, it doesn't have a clear victor or loser to the matchup. So, yeah, starting off with Vigar. Now, this is where me and Cubic's room pages are going to get. This, the skill matchup branch, is me and Cubic's room page get a little, little different. Um, like I said, Cubic takes the same Giga Chad room page every game. But I like um, Electric in this matchup with Proto Cancel just because I want to one shot Vigar. I think he's like a primal, like a, a primal target that I need to kill that game. And, um,. The reason why I put him in skill matchup is because when you are forwards, he can just cage you. Um, he can just QR you. So, yeah, these guys are that. Uh, do you have anything else? Um, Just try and look for opportunities when you can bubble him over a wall, and he's pretty much a free kill. Yeah. You never want to, like, fight Vigar straight on. If you want to, you want to go from out of vision, if that makes sense. Because if he starts with cage, then you won't be able to kill him. Ooh, yeah. another thing. If you're queuing and he E's and you look don't like walk you're, into do, it. Yeah, do not walk into it. Just let the Q fizzle. Just let it go boom. <laughs> um, also, don't walk right up to Vigar in lane. Because the thing is, he can just, if you are forwards, he can just cage where you were and you're pretty much dead. So, yeah, that's that on Vigar. Um,. Yet again, build is the exact same, except for I would build Proto in this matchup. He just goes Luden's Lich. I go Proto, Luden's Row. Okay, next one. Karma. Um, Karma is low-key 
giga annoying. <laughs> um, she just out sustains you. She builds MR, she builds Athene, she builds Mercs. She's very obnoxious. Um, when, let's say, you miss your bubble or she has cleanse, she can man she can shield and then mantra W you and you're you have to burn flash. Like you're gonna die. Cause someone's gonna come kill you. And also with Karma is that the tether range from her like your R, if you like are right in front of her, when you tell her back, you're still gonna be in range. Also another thing is if she tethers you, you can actually alter away and it breaks the chain. So that's another thing that you should worry about. And also don't stand next to creeps because karma's Q is it's like the same thing as AoE. It's AoE. So, um, that's pretty much how you play this matchup. Um, Karma can shove you in. It just depends on who's playing Karma. Um, later in the game, I think you should just look for picks from Fog of War. Also, when you ult forwards, she's going to Mantra Q you. So make sure you don't do it in her range of Mantra Q. Or you only go into her range of when she's sleeping. Which I think is pretty much the matchup. Everything else? No. Let's finish it. Now on to Talia. Um, Talia is either it like I said, it just depends on who's playing Talia. Um, there's a person named Always Plan Ahead on an A. Uh, he's like a 1K LP Aurelian Soulmate, but he also plays Talia. And I've played against Talia a bunch, and it really is just who can land their shit better or who can get like, who can just land it better? Um, in this matchup, you never, ever, ever, ever... When she has combo, when her W is up, you never want to open with R. Because as soon as you go back with R, she just W E's you and Q's and you're dead. So what you want to do is you want to ult over like a wall or something where she can't... Or bubble first and then sleep her so she can't get her W E off. And also make sure... Like I said, when a lot of matches will be like this, when you Q, she's gonna look to W you when you're walking in that straight line. So just let the Q fizzle. Um, for the electric page, I, I would just go Proto or I would go Ludens, uh, Ludens Rob a Lich. Uh, Cubix build is just uh, Ludens Lich. And be careful of her um, roaming too. Yeah, she eyes. roams a lot. So make sure you ping your teammates on when, when she's roaming and when she's not. Um, yeah, that's pretty much totally match up. Okay, um, next on to Velkots. Um, see, a lot of people, a lot of people think Velkots is actually like a hard, hard counter to Zoe, and in my opinion, he is. But it's also a skill matchup, because Velkots shoves any mage in, pretty much, really hard. And Zoe kind of low-key struggles with wave, but... If you can land a good bubble once or twice, he's like, if you get a lead in this matchup, Velkaz is doomed. Um, it's, this, it's the same concept. When you are forwards, make sure you're not in his combo range of his E, because if he just EWQRs, you're pretty much dead. Um, I also want to point out that I don't think Velkaz outscales you. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. Zoe, Zoe will outscale. So, because the matchup is like that, you can play safe as well, and just, if he's shoving, if he's shoving you in, you can freeze, you can, like, just keep, you don't have to shove. Yeah. Like, you can just last hit, scale, and then win by scaling, which is my play style. Yeah. Or, if you want, and if he's also freezing, then you can look to poke him, if he's not shoving. Yeah. Um, oh, and dodge is E. Dodge is E. Don't don't Q if he E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now on to another vol very volatile matchup, Kiana. Oh wait, wait. Um, oh. for Kiana, I just want to say that I think Barrier is pretty good in this matchup, and if she E's onto you, if I'm correct, it places her on the backside like Aurelia Q, so you can bubble behind yourself. Yeah. And she will get slapped. And with ending with that note, I'm going to be right back. Oh my god. Okay, well, Cupid is me right back. Um, Kiana, Kiana matchup is, um, 
pretty pretty straightforward. All you want to do is just harass her for level one. Kiana has the worst level one in the game. Um, she's super weak early. Just harass her, hedge her a lot, which is just Q, auto Q. Shove her in, shove her in, shove her in. Um, make her waste as much pots as possible. Just be very careful of her level three all in. Because if, if Kiana has cleanse or she has like a brain, she could actually just 100 to zero kill you. Um, even if you have barrier, if she plays it well, because she can harass you with two Qs, and if you have like 450 or 400 HP, her E auto Q W Q combo will kill you. So, um, okay, I'm back. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much how I would play the Kiana matchup. Oh, also, Kiana runs a lot. Oh, and also, when Kiana ults you, you can actually R her R, so you won't get stunned when she comes back, when you get back. And, uh, do you have anything else? No, this match is pretty easy. Yep. On to a very complex matchup. If you're if you're high elo, this is pretty simple. If you're low elo, Jesus take the wheel. Um, we're gonna be talking about Yasuo. Um. Oh, we're gonna be talking about Yasuo. Um, Yasuo is pretty pretty tricky if you're not good with Zoe. Um. The way this matchup works is you want to R forwards bait his win wall. Or I, I, a thing that I see Yas was doing in Challenger, by the way, when I bubble them, they win wall forwards and don't win wall sideways or something. Do you see what I'm saying, Cubic? Like, yeah, but if they win wall sideways, there's still ways you can get around yeah, it. Yeah, like, make sure, yeah, make sure you're not so doing just, it. Just let them win wall first and then pick your angle of approach. Yeah, agree. Um... Also, when he's uh, when he when, uses wind wall, your your empowered auto attacks go through it. Yep, your autos go through wind wall. Um, also, another thing is you could R behind the wind wall and E him, or you could um, you can bubble him behind yourself if he's eating directly on top of you. Yep, two. yep, yep, yep. It's the same thing. If he dashes onto you, you can just bubble him. Uh, in this matchup, if you're struggling really hard, seekers is fine. Um, barrier is also okay in this matchup. Heal is okay in this matchup. I think it really just comes down to how good you are at weaving your autos and how good you are at timing your E. Because if you can E unexpectedly, um, the matchup's pretty free. This is where animation cancels come into play, where if you can EQ cancel, I mean, yeah, if you EQ cancel properly, Yasuo can't see the animation of it coming. So it's pretty easy. Um, other than that, oh, another thing is when you're pressing Q, if he's Qing you, let the Q fizzle do not get hit by the knockup. You will die. You will get all in. Um, do you, do you have anything else? I don't think you die all the time if you get hit by Yasunado. If yep, you, you do, shouldn't. if you do get hit by Yasunado and he does all onto you, use a summoner or waste a summoner, even if he has full health, just ignite and run away with Nimbus Cloak. Yeah, agree. Okay, on to Talon. This matchup, I can't stress enough, you have to run... Okay, I actually have the wrong runes here for Talon. I would take um, Time Warp Biscuit, and I would actually rush Boots first, because Talon actually has the highest MR mid lane in the game, and he just has a ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous amount of MR, and you really need Magic Pen Boots early as fuck. Another thing is when you're playing against Talon, when he queues onto you, you just E for free. Um, you can harass Talon. Just make sure when he hits level two, if he's harassed you with one W and there's one stack on you, you need to back up until that stack expires. You have to wait until Talon's stack expires to harass him. Um, also, the champ roams a lot, a lot, a lot. So please, please, please ping your teammates. See what's going to like, what's going on. Um, also, if you need Seekers in the matchup, it's fine. If you're really, really, really struggling, then you can go Seekers. Anything else? I personally do not build Seekers ever, because I don't like Zhonyas as an item, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> um, if Talon starts roaming, I like to... I don't usually follow his roam. If I see an opportunity, I will follow his roam. But normally, I just hard up and get like two platings while he roams. Yeah. Um, I just take that, and I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Now we're on to Galio. 
So the reason why I put Galio in skill matchup is because he's like, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Galio is the type of champion that like, he doesn't really like win. He doesn't beat Zoe. He doesn't lose against Zoe. It's just very in the middle cookie cutter. And if a Galio is good, he can catch you out of position with uh, when you ult forwards. With like, he can just dart, uh, charge on you. W. Also, when Galio is charging up his taunt, make sure, because it's the same thing with Fiora Repost. If you try ulting to dodge his W, he can still hold it down. And then when you get back, you're taunted and it's just a whole can of worms. Um, and also, Galio has like a global ult, semi global, so when he's off the map, just ping. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how this magic goes. Also, make sure you can dodge his Qs. If the Galio goes full AP too, even though he's a Galio, just recognize that if he's going full AP, you can still one shot him. Yep. Uh, okay, on to Twisted Fates. Now, this is where me and Cubic's room page gets very, very, very different. Um, I how I personally go tenacity with cleanse and. Merc Treads, just because I personally have a vendetta against TF. I just hate playing against TF, it's super annoying. Um, this is the cookie cutter page I go. Um, a thing with TF is red card has a massive AoE, so don't stand next to your creeps. Um, also, you can just harass TF early if you're um, trying to. Just make sure when you keep track of his uh, three, four auto passive, because that fourth auto actually does really hurt. It stacks up. It does stack up. Yeah. Um, for me, personally, I, I'm the opposite of Detention. I love this matchup. He's very easy to lane against. He's very easy for me to outscale. And if he roams, I shove in and get free plays. I rarely lose to TFs. And that's just because... I, I guess my playstyle is good. I I think the correct playstyle is to match his roams, but I like getting plating mid lane because just because TF roams, usually he'll guarantee a kill, but it's not like a hundred percent confirmation that his roam will go well. Mm -hmm. And if his roam does not go well, and you stay mid and you get plating, then you do outscale him, and you do get his plating, and you get into a stronger position to win the game. However, you have to be careful of Twisted Fate side laning because yeah, he can side lane but you cannot side lane yeah. and that makes it kind of rough to deal with. You can side lane in certain circumstances but you can get fucked if you're up too far. Yeah, I agree. And I would never do it if I cleanse. Yeah, you have to go cleanse. Period. Um, okay, on to the last person in skill matchup is Vladimir. Okay, the reason why me and Cupic put skill matchup for Vlad, because we both think Vladimir early is easy, but there's sometimes you're playing against Vladimir and you shit on him, and there's sometimes where you're playing against Vladimir and you can't kill him and he kills you. Um, with this champion, as soon as Vladimir gets two CDR items, child, you don't fight him. <laughs> You just look to land a bubble and then poke. And then look to land another bubble and kill. That's pretty much how you play this matchup. And you can harass him a lot, but... The reason why I go electric in this matchup is that I want to one-shot him with my bubble. Cupic, like I said, he really likes the auto-weave play style. So both play styles are perfectly fine. Um, there's no correct one. They're both fine. Um, do you have anything else? No, nothing much. Just my play style for most things is the same. Just... Q auto, weave autos, land cues. Yep. It's pretty much the same. Okay, now we're gonna go on to enemy favored matchups. Um, enemy favored matchups are champions that either give Zoe a really, really hard time, but Zoe can still survive, but it's slightly into the enemy favor. Like they, if they play it normally, they'll win. Um, starting off with the strongest one in the suit is Oriana. Oriana, every time you Q, or you can R forwards, she has a reaction time to QW you, or like do a little quick combo. Um, also, um, Oriana, <laughs> Cupic, I actually recently saw Cupic play against Nazir that he went, Athene's Mercs. 
<laughs> and that guy double did magic yeah resist. double magic resist runes, and that guy did no damage. So if you hate playing in Zoe, um, just go double Amar and do that build. A Dean's Rash into Murko. Yeah. Um, but, but. but Oriana, Oriana matchup. Be very always keep tabs on her ball, and never ever 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 use bubble unless you're getting a gank because this matchup ori ori's matchups i mean ori's mana is so low super low like she can spam all day zoe can't really do that unless you're only casting q um also make sure that you can if she stands in the creep wave make sure you can uh get airy prox with her q on creeps you anything else no oh also when you if she looks like she's gonna r you can ult out of her ultimate so yeah, that's pretty much the enemy favorite matchup. On to Lulu, which is pretty new on the list. Um, she is, like, this is where me and Cubic's room pages are different. Um, I'd probably go Proto in this matchup just because Lulu is a champion that if you don't kill her, she makes other people a monster. She's like a non cringe version of Yumi. <laughs> like she's like the OG, like buffing, like support esque character. Also, Lulu's lane phase actually is kind of strong against Zoe. She actually out damages you with a uh, Pix autos, with a uh, area Q. I think it's all just pretty much strong. Um, in this matchup, when you are forwards, she's gonna just EQ you. Um, also, if you're getting ganked, make sure you use your ultimate very sparingly because if you all are forwards and you get ganked, she just polymorphs you and you're pretty much dead. Uh, also, don't get baited by Lulu because her ults, when, yeah, you have to kill her before she ults. Don't underestimate Lulu for being a support champion because she's actually not that bad of a mid laner. Yeah, she, she deals a lot of damage. She can easily solo kill you. Yeah. It's very deceptive damage, too, because, like, it stacks up pretty quick. Uh, like, sometimes I run barrier in this matchup. Like, oh. she actually has so much burst. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty high. If um, you get to like half health, Lulu can flash onto you, E, auto Q, and ignite, and you dying. might die. Yeah. Jam's pretty crusty. I don't like it. Um, okay, on to another cringe matchup, which is Irelia. In this matchup, I will never, unless I'm like being a Giga Chad that day, take ignite because this champion, if she lands, her E, child, you're about to get shit on. <laughs> like, you're about to get actually defecated on. It's such a hard, hard... It's honestly just how good the Aurelia is. And if you're good, then this matchup is super easy. But if the Aurelia is really good, then no. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I think you have to go barrier. You can harass Aurelia early with keys and stuff, but once Aurelia gets wits, uh, mercs, it's doomed. But the lane for against the champion is hard, but you do outscale her. Yeah, you Aurelia do outscale is her. Aurelia not good late game. Yeah. She's really, really squishy, and she just blows up from anything. You One of the biggest trips, tricks in this matchup is if she jumps onto you, with even if she E's you, if like you have the marker, she Q's onto you, bubble behind yourself, and it will sleep her. And yeah. you can literally beat her up. Yeah. If she doesn't have tenacity boots. If she yeah. has tenacity boots, I don't fight her and I just play for spit scaling. You have you have No, you don't have <laughs> Even if Aurelia you can't kill Aurelia, she shouldn't yeah. be able to kill you. Agreed. And you do outscale her, you just have to go for other members of her team. And in a team fight, if she's doing whatever, just try and bubble her and shut yeah. her down. If she gets hit by a bubble in a team fight, she should die. Yeah. Okay, now on to the next one, which is Tristana. Um, Trist is not very common mid lane, but sometimes people do play Trist. Um, Trist, level two, every single time you play against Tristana, she will all in you level two. She's going to rock a jump, and if she's good she'll rock a jump and then flash your bubble so hold on to your bubble until you know you are going to hit it 
Um, also, you can take Exhaust or Barrier in this matchup. But other than... You, okay, um, you shouldn't let her rocket jump on you. Like, as soon as she hits two, it's just back, yeah. back, up. Back the fuck back, up. Back, back, up. Give CS, do whatever. And as soon as you hit two, because she usually hits two before you. Yeah. But as soon as you hit two again, just honestly, you don't usually try to jump on you if you're two. Do not go W in this matchup, in my opinion. I, I prefer going E. Yes, I can. In case yeah. she does jump on you. They don't usually try and flash your bubble level 2 because they usually don't have enough damage to kill you level 2 because they usually go resolve secondary, so... Oh yeah, true. But, like, later in the game, be careful of her flashing your bubble after she Ws onto you. Yeah. I think the matchup's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure you just lose... Like, you pretty much lose it. Not, like, hard, but, like, you can kill her. It just depends on if you can land bubble or not. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, it's kind of like Corky, but a bit stronger in the laning and a yeah. bit weaker. Like also, if you're really, really, really losing, then like I said, Seekers is fine. Um, Cupid doesn't like Seekers, but it's just depending if you're like really struggling, then yeah, it's fine. Okay, now on to Zillion. Um, Cupid so he doesn't have that much, like um, matchup knowledge. Okay. Matchup knowledge on this matchup, but if I R forwards. All he does is just double bomb right when I come back. Like, right when I come back. So, what you want to do in this matchup is you want to bubble through walls and look to one-shot him or bait his ultimate. Like, when he bubbles, he's probably going to ult. So, just wait for it and then bubble again and then kill him. And kill him. Um, you can harass him in this lane. Like, you can, like, airy harass him. Just make sure you can dodge his Qs. Also, later in the game... Do not R forwards against Zillion. You will die. He will slow you, and you will die. So that's... I just want to put that cleanse could be a reasonable summer. Yeah, in this cleanse could be a good option. Or if you're not comfortable with cleanse, you can go spellbook, um, and go like you can get cleanser later. But yeah, it's pretty much the Zillion matchup. And uh, next on to Fizz. Now look at my rune page. Guess what? I'm a pussy. <laughs> I go barrier, bone plating, unflinching, double MR. Uh, and nullifying R because I just don't like this champion. Um, it's a losing matchup in the fact that if you miss your if you miss your bubble, you're dead. If you R forwards and he R's you when you come back, you're dead. Like you have to you have to build and play super defensively. Also, never ever fight lo Fizz level three. Fizz will always win. I think you can win at level 3. You just have to... When he Qs onto you, it's the same thing with Aurelia. You bubble him and let the minions hit him. Yeah. Every time he goes onto you, you can... Most of the time, you can just bubble him and win the trade. So just realize that. This is my trick for the lane. I usually... I actually don't think this is that hard of a matchup. Stay away from his R. Yeah. And, like, if you bubble him when he jumps on you, it's not that difficult. Um, he does tend to roam a bit. And when he does that, I just don't like roaming. Ping, yeah, ping, I ping, don't ping. like roaming against him when he's roaming. Because if he roams, and he's not actually roaming and sitting in a bush, and he R's you, you, you die. Yeah. So, I just stay mid lane, and I continue to get played in. True. Um, that's pretty much this matchup. Also, if, like I said, if you want to go Banshees, you can. If you want to go Zanias, you can. Um, on to, and the next matchup is Zed. Um, we are still an enemy favored matchup, guys. Um, so Zed is either, it, it, dep it really depends on the Zed player playing it. It does. Because if the Zed's good, you're probably going to lose later. And you're probably going to, like, lose because Zed's a splitter. Um, oh, you say magic resist against Zed? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The rune page is wrong, guys. I'm sorry. You're about to take armor. Um, just pretend this is armor. But <laughs> you can fuck off. You can... When you... <laughs> fuck, that really fucked me up. When you are... <laughs> when you are forwards... Um... Make sure you bait his ultimate, or if you're R'ing forwards, you bait his R, and then you can bubble behind you. Um, 
Also, when his when he looks for a shadow, so this is what I've been seeing Zeds doing, like Hilo Zeds. What they'll do is they'll W and then R, and then instead of W instead of Ring to where their R was, they they W to where their that. shadow. Yes. Yeah. But even when they do it, it's pretty easy to hit him instantly. As yeah. soon as you see the R, you can still predict. Yep. Where he's gonna be, and you should be able to bubble him before he can W back. Yep. Um, also, if you really struggle in this matchup, Seekers is fine, but if you don't know the matchup, Barrier is also fine. I think if you suffer with this matchup, I think it's better to go Barrier than invest in Zhanyas, because I hate Zhanyas. <laughs> okay, then that's fine too. Um, but yeah, Zed matchup, never match splitting him. You're gonna have to ask some of your laners to help you, like, deal with Zed. Um, and another thing is, when Sh Shadow and Bubble have the same cooldown, but if you get hit by his E, the cooldown is actually decreased, I'm pretty sure. So the Shadow goes down in cooldown. So it won't match your Bubble cooldown, but just remember when he Shadows, there's a window where you can kill him. Um, okay, on to Cassiopeia. In my opinion, she is deceptive. De she's either super free, and like I said, it's dependent on the player. It just really depends who's playing Cassiopeia. Because a good Cassiopeia is when you are forwards, people don't realize when you are forwards in Zoe, you're always forced to look forwards. So she ults, as soon as you are forwards, you, you she just ults you, and then Ws right on top of where you land back. Um, so you have to be very, very, very cautious about that. Also, you can harass her early, like pre-tier, but once she gets tier, you should you can look to harass her, but if you don't dodge her uh, Noxious Blasts, her Qs, you're going to lose. Do you have anything else? Casape is basically an AP version of an ADC. Yeah. So she's actually not that hard to play against. You just have to be careful about the standing in her Q, her W, and as for her ulti, honestly, most of the time you should be out of range. Well, no, I'm saying if you are forwards... Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But usually if you are forward onto a cast, they don't R you. I'm saying a good... I've played against really good cast. Every single good cast I've played against does that. Mm. And then they go cleanse. So if you they get bubble, they just cleanse and kill you. Or you have to burn flash. I don't, th I don't think I've burst a good cast on high elo bed. Because <laughs> I have not lost to a cast in the oh longest time. Oh my god. I say that. Child, these Cassiopeias up here are crusty. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the matchup how it goes. Feaster, it's a Feaster family matchup for both sides. On to Ziggs. This, this matchup actually can be quite annoying. Actually, really, really, really annoying. Because Ziggs has very low mana costs, very high base damage, um, a disruption... And also his spells are, like, if someone's walking a straight line, they're pretty easy to hit. So Zoe's spells are actually pretty easy to get hit by. Also, don't stand next to uh, champ, uh, I mean, uh, minions in this matchup, because he can just Q you. Also, when you are forwards, you can just R to where you ulted, and it's a free Mega Inferno Bomb. Uh, same thing with Satchel Charge, you can do the same thing. Um, just look to R forwards or poke him with long range Qs, and then look for a long range bubble and then into a kill. Do you have anything else? Um, just not much to say in this matchup. Usually, he won't let you. He's actually hard to siege against, but try and go for bubbles on him late game. As for early, it's kind of even. Like you don't really kill him. He doesn't really kill you. You kind of just farm. Yeah. I don't think this matchup is decided on like. The matchup, I think it depends on other factors in the game, like your team comps and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's pretty much even. True. That's about it. Yep. On to Zareth. Um, Zareth. 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 <laughs> Why are you saying Zareth? Zareth? Zareth is, um... Um, so, for Zareth, you have to be mindful of his cues. Um, standing behind minions. 
when you're approaching to sleep him, he can slow you with W or stun you with E. Zerath is actually quite tricky to deal with. Um, he He's deceptively strong. He has more range than you. And you just gotta be careful. If he's taking cleanse, you probably can't kill him. If he's not taking cleanse, you can kill him. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Part. And also, another thing is... Like I said, when you're queuing and he's going to look to stun you, dodge the stun. When you're queuing, he's going to look to W, you, dodge the W. Um, just let it fizzle. This matchup, you should let Zareth push into you and get your jungler to come kill him. Because that, that's pretty much his weakness. He just auto shoves. And then he's vulnerable. So, uh, yep. That's all for enemy favored matchups. Now we're going on to just straight up losing matchups like you will lose this matchup you'll lose on to the most cringe champ in this category which is kindred um people are gonna be like oh like i've never versed a kindred mid well there's a high low kindred player that terrorizes people and i need to put it on the list because it is ingrained homophobia in my head because <laughs> playing as champions homophobic mid lane um basically the way kind of mid works is once she hits level three she'll probably go cleanse or ignite but as soon as she hits level three she is going to look to all in you and also she can dodge bubble very very easily and also this champ goes mercs she goes nasty rune and she goes wits so much fun wow um just be very 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 cautious when playing against kendrick because what if she gets this champ can turn an inch into a mile when it comes into a, like a lead. Um, also, a good thing is when you're fighting Kindred and her ultimate, if you sleep her, no spells will wake her up because you can't deal damage to her under 200 HP. So no matter what, you actually can't wake her up. So let the sleep finish and then let her ult finish and then kill her. You have anything else? Cupid? Cupid? I guess he went to the restroom or something. Cupid? <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'll just keep going. Um, yeah, pretty much the Kindred matchup is be very, very, very cautious of her all in level three. Also, be very, very, very careful of her um, her ult being deceptively strong. And also, don't get baited by Kinder because she heals actually a fuck ton. Um, on to next matchup. Boom. Syndra. Um, the Syndra matchup. If you guys watch my stream, you know I ban Syndra every single game. Oh, wait one second. Did my... Well... Hello? Hello? Was I muted? Yes! Ever since Zara. You're lying! I am not! Okay, well, I already went over Kendra. Do you have anything for Kendra then? You lose. I like barrier. That's okay. about it. Okay, Sandra. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> Syndra. The Syndra matchup, you pretty much lose. Um, Syndra just spams her spells. I just want to say I think it's even now with how weak Syndra is at the moment. Oh, like her nerf? Yeah. Yeah, but when she hits level 9, it's the same. It's the same thing. No, but... I think Syndra's only hard part is the laning. Like, after laning, I think you can... It's not that bad to deal with her. I, I think just don't... Don't walk in predictable lines. Also, when you're playing in Syndra, there's a, a circle around her that if you walk into that circle, she's going to kill you. So be very cautious about that. Also, if you are forwards, that's a free stun for Syndra. Just be very careful. Because she can kill you. Do you have anything else? 
Um, yeah, just be careful about eating too many cues. If she's poking yeah. you a lot with cues, use your pots and she should go oom, and then you can just shove, and then she's kind of up. Yeah. Okay, on to... I like barrier here, too. Yeah. Syndra. Um. Also, the Syndra matchup, just... If you're not used to playing in Syndra, honestly, you can go Mercs. Banshee is fine. Also, Syndra actually can side lane, and... Uh, so we can't. So just be wary of that. Um, next, Echo. Um, Echo isn't is into losing matchups, which means Echo wins. You can harass Echo as much as you want, but as soon as Echo gets protobelt, you're pretty much fucked. You're probably going to lose. Um, I think as soon as he hits six, it's pretty doomed. Like, yeah. You cannot kill him. Yeah, agree. He just shoves you in, and you kind of just have to deal with it. Um, I prefer Barrier actually more over than Ignite, because if you don't kill him with Ignite, then it's like, it doesn't really do anything to help you. Yeah. So uh, you're taking Ignite, make sure you kill him, like, before he turns six. Yeah. And another At thing, least once. Another thing, too, is uh, when you R forwards to bubble him, he's going to look to dodge it, so make sure you predict it. Oh, and if he R's when drowsy, he comes out of his R slept. Yep, that's another tip. Okay, on to another cringe character. Da -da -da. Diana. <laughs> Diana, ciao. No, ma'am. <laughs> um, this champ is very deceptively strong. She can build tanky and actually deal. Her damage, it, just, it like creeps up on you. If that makes sense. Once she hits three, she can kill you. Pretty easily. Do you have anything? This champion is literally like Jesus. Like her <laughs> W blocks like everything. Like even if you sleep her, you cannot kill her. Cause once she gets her catalyst, your EQ combo like barely does 30% <laughs> damage. It's actually crazy. You cannot kill the champion. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You need help from your jungler. Yeah. I used to duo with a Nunu player, and that's like one of the easiest ways to shut down Diana, like through ganks. Yeah. Just if she gets a lead, you're going. You're probably going to lose. Very hard. Um. Okay. On oh, and even if you get a lead against Diana. It doesn't really matter anything. Yeah. Because she's still, still gonna go. side lane and farm and get stronger than you and you cannot side lane against her. And she you she's just she's just Jesus. Okay, and that's it for Diana. Something's rotten with Diana. <laughs> okay, on to LeBlanc. Now I have to take Spellbook in this matchup because I fucking hate LeBlanc so much. The reason why I don't like LeBlanc is because my ping on NA is actually kind of high and I can't really press E fast enough to hit her when she does distortion. Um, honestly, if you could just play safe and scale, you outscale the shit out of this champ. But if the LeBlanc player is really good, you're going to lose. You're I, for me, it's a bit different. I always go Barry in this matchup. I should not have put the Ignite, but... I feel like if you go barrier, she can never kill you. You can out shove her. Um, sometimes if you land a bubble, you can literally kill her because she's actually really squishy. But I can see why other people struggle with LeBlanc, but I think people just need to try going barrier a bit more. And I don't, I, she really does struggle with killing you if you take barrier. Yeah. Um, and if you take barrier, she's going to have to ignite you. See, that's the thing about Zoe. Like, you can pick up their sums too, right? So, yeah. if you bury her combo and her, like, ignite and stuff like that, you can literally just take her ignite and most likely kill her. Um, and she can play tricks with you. She can E you. And then when she E's you, you, you should R away from her chain. Yeah. So, it breaks it. Um, honestly, once you get lost chapter, you can start shoving her and she cannot shove back because... Your shove is stronger than LeBlanc's. Yeah. LeBlanc is pretty slow when it comes to shoving. She has to W auto 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 the back of the line while you can literally just hit it with a Q and it 
blows up. And your yeah. Q has a lower cooldown than her W. If LeBlanc wants to shove, she needs to use her R. Um, whenever she leaves lane, you can shove really, really hard and just make her pay for leaving lane. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Okay, on to uh, Nocturne. Um, the Nocturne matchup, it's it's not hard. It's losing because you can't kill him. <laughs> um, pretty much when this champ hits six, you're probably going to die because he'll just spell shield your uh, bubble. But if you play really well and you uh, ult out of his tether, his fear, then it's winnable. But you just have to make sure, like, don't get baited by his sustain is actually really high and his burst is really yeah. high. Yeah. I like Barry in this matchup. Yeah, Barry is good. You can run away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty much all it is, is just R when he, when he ults you, R, and break the fear tether, bubble him, and then run away. And the, or you could probably look to kill him. In certain cases, if you're close to a wall, you can R over when he's going to connect, and you can just draw, drop him over there, and, you yeah. back, and you're safe. Yeah. Also, sitting on a stopwatch here isn't a bad idea. Just sitting on a stopwatch. Um... Okay, next. Malzahar. Woo! <laughs> this champion is absolutely vile. Um, I don't know what to say. Champ is just really cringe. He shoves the living shit out of you in, and you can't bubble him because of his um, passive. You can't. You have to open with like an auto in a bubble. Or something like that. And also, when you get bubbled, he can use his voidlings and put in front of him and it blocks your bubble. I mean, it blocks your Q. Um, you just have to be very, very, very smart when you play against Malzahar. Also, when you alt forwards, he can ult you for free later in the game. So be very careful about that. You have anything? Um, there's nothing much with Malzahar. I, when I play this matchup, I like to farm for most of it, see if I can get a free sneak kill. Yeah. But before he turns six, a free sneak kill. After he turns six, I don't try and fight him at all. Yeah, because he'll just all you when you die. Yeah, that's about it for this matchup. Yeah, that's pretty much it. On to Annie. Okay. Oh, I really don't like this matchup. Neither do I. This champ some, something's wrong here. Something's not Christian about this champion. <laughs> <laughs> this the way this champ, the reason why I put Spellbook on mine is because you pretty much need to go heal, cleanse, barrier, like every, like you need like all of these sums to play against Annie later in the game. Cause the thing is you outscale Annie, but if Annie gets close to you, you are dead. 100% dead. Um, and if you land a bubble, she can R your Q to like block it. Yeah. Not and to also, mention her, she has her molten shield too. Her shield. Yeah, so she's actually kind of tanky. Um, another reason why I don't like this champion is when I R forwards, I always risk of her stunning and then just comboing me and I die. Also, early game, you can like poke her with like like her ass, but. Low key, if she just molten shields you, and when you auto her, you're hitting yourself with molten shield plus QW, that's electrocute. So, you have to be careful about that. It's it, it's not like that. Yeah, it is. No, yes. It, it's just the auto damage. Her, her honey, <laughs> if you auto any with molten shield and she QWs you. It procs uh -huh. electrocute. Oh, okay, okay. No, no. I thought you were talking about a UQ auto her and then you. No, 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 no. I thought you talking. Yeah, I was okay. Never no, mind. No, 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 you're no, right. no. You're right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. <laughs> I, I didn't know what you were talking about. I was oh, like, okay. do you think? Do you think <laughs> Annie E reflex electrocutes? No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, that's not what I'm saying. Um. Okay. Yeah. That. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah. Uh. Overall, any matchup, just be, v don't get near this champion. Usually you want to bubble her from afar. 
Uh, Barrier is pretty good in this matchup. Cleanse is also good in this matchup too. <clears throat> On to Victor. Now, this champion and majority of people of watching this as ELO is probably going to be very easy to play against. The reason why I put him in losing matchup is because there is some really good Victor players like Dunn that make this champion more oppressive than an angry feminist on Tumblr and it's not very fun to play against. It's kind of cringe. Also, Power of Evil is also really good at Yeah, Victor. Power of Evil is also really, really good at Victor. Um, his damage is deceptively high as fuck. Like, actually super, super high. He He's, has super good burst and decent DPS. Yeah, every trait you're probably going to lose because Siphon Power gives a shield. And usually Victor's got Taste of Blood with Aerie. And not only that, he can literally just spam E on you. Yeah. Also, when you R forwards, he um, when you R forwards, he can just uh, E you into R or put the gravity field when you go back. In this matchup, you actually kind of want to go like cleanse or not cleanse, um, barrier or heal because normally Victor's go cleanse. And if you bubble him, he's they're going to want you to come into you and then they're going to cleanse and then throw everything down and kill you. Do you have anything else? No. Okay, on to hard counters slash minus three LP. Okay. Fiddlesticks, there's a lot to talk about. Okay, you dodge. Okay, Cassidy. <laughs> Cassidy. The Cassidy matchup is low key a dodge, but um, you just. I think go it's winnable. You have to go Doran's Blade. Yeah, but you have to go. You have to go, go, you have to go Doran's Blade, though. I've, I've gone during your one if you have jungle help. You just need a yeah, lot of jungle help. Yeah, yeah, you need a lot of jungle help. Um, when he hits 11, FF. <laughs> or just just try just try killing him as much as possible. Early game. Um, just harass him, shove him out. Or a really good thing is actually don't touch the wave. Only harass him and make his creeps come into you. So you force the jungler to come in. You see what I'm saying? Oh, and also there's this one tip from um, this Korean team. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. But instead of going D Blade, he recommended Cull instead on D Blade. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Cull is fine. But uh, yeah. Because that has better return value than D Ring. D Blade, D -blade yeah, yeah. I think definitely when it comes to Kassin, just pray to Cthulhu you can get help. If you don't. If effort. you don't have a duo, I would suggest you dodge. <laughs> yeah. Okay, on to Aurelian Soul. Really, there's so much to talk about. You press dodge. Okay. On to Azir. Um, Azir... I like to dodge this too, but on some cases where I do not dodge, it is not fun to play against <laughs> as any champion. Azir is so disgusting. Yeah, Azir is really, 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 really strong if played properly. Um, like, if you look at my rune pages, I'm taking double MR. <laughs> like, I'm being a little bitch. Um, do you have anything for Azir? Like, anything to play against? I like against? Barrier. I like Barrier a lot. I'm saying, like, playing against Azir. Um... Like, in lane. When he, when he, when you go for Qs, he's gonna attempt a WQ, and you can like make your Q fizz out if you don't want to get hit by that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get hit by it, and you're like, oh, you just take it to push the wave. But this matchup is not fun. Yeah, it's crusty. He can all in you pretty easily with like his E as well. Like if he does that, just barrier your knight and run away with Nimbus Cook. <laughs> Yeah. And also, Azir just outpokes you, and also, like, uh, he just outscales you at every stage of the game. Early, mid, late. So, recommend dodging if you're not good against playing Azir. I mean, he does outscale you in the traditional sense, but Zoe, Zoe has the, the factor of being able to one-shot anyone. Well, not anyone, but if you can one-shot a squishy, like, 
you can make the game a 4v5 basically yeah. a team fight so you you most of the time you won't be able to one shot azir because he takes funds but if you can one shot their adc or support or even their jungler then technically you, you don't lose due to scaling because zoe, zoe does scale pretty well just because yeah. of the fact that she can do that so if you're having a traditional 5v5 and you do not get any picks yes azir outscales you yeah. But if you play to Zoe's strengths and you can get picks, then you don't technically get out of scale. Yeah, agree. Okay, on to... Oh. Olivia. Olivia. <laughs> um, this champion, in my opinion, teaches such bad gameplay. She just stalls the game. Like, she... I fucking hate this dumb bitch bird. I hate playing against Olivia. She's one of those all-time hated champions because you can kill Anivia. It's seeming as Kassadin. You can kill Anivia as much as you can. She'll be a free kill as much as you want, but if she builds and plays properly, first of all, you'll never kill her. Second of all, she'll always have more CS than you. She'll always shove the wave faster than you. She'll... And also, when you are forward, she can just wall into Q and then... Um, her ult, it's really, really, it's actually really hard to play against. I would never R into her. Yeah, like, like ever. Yeah, don't R in this matchup. Um, she, if she walls, you can use it to extend your bubble. Yeah. Um, what else? Honestly, I just don't like fighting in Avia. I tried to shove her in early because her wave clear is not good early, pre six. And then after that, I try and go for picks on the rest of her team or on her. Yeah. Because the Nivias usually run TP. They don't usually run cleanse unless they're really scared. And if they do not run TP, if they run cleanse, take advantage of that and shove her in over and over and over again and make her miss CS from that. Yeah. And gain a small lead from that and try and transition that into other parts of the game by focusing on not mid lane. Everywhere other than mid lane. <laughs> yeah, Anivia is just... Anivia. <laughs> I don't know what to say. She like, says, I don't want to interact with Yeah, you. she's like, like no. can't do anything about that. She's like, no ma'am, this is my this is, this is is my space. You're not going into it. And now on to the final, final person in the hard counter slash minus, the LP, minus 3 LP is Cupic's Lux. main champion, Lux. Now, Lux, if the this matchup can, you can survive. But if the Lux is good, it's probably one of Zoe's hardest counters. Hard, hard counter. Um, you can elaborate on it because you play Lux the most, so. Yeah, so if you're on Lux perspective, if Zoe wants to queue QR, QR the wave from super far range and get that cannon minion, you can Q her and you can R her and you can E her and she will die. <laughs> There are many times where I burst high yellow Zoe's and they get greedy for the cannon, they get greedy for the CS, and they will R forward like I won't just Q them. And they will explode. <laughs> um, against this matchup, you cannot be... Like, you need to go cleanse. You cannot be greedy and going night or anything yeah. else. It's not even worth it. Just go, just go cleanse. Um, even if you do go cleanse, this is a really hard matchup for Zoe. If you ever try and queue the wave, Lux can place an E and slow you, and she can prevent you from even hitting the Q, but she can also poke you with her E, she can stop you with her Q. Even if you do somehow manage to sleep her, she has cleanse, yeah. or she doesn't want to waste her cleanse. If she, she doesn't have to waste her cleanse when you sleep her. If you sleep a Lux, if you R E, so you don't have your R anymore, and you have mm -hmm. to walk forward, she can literally just throw a Q, or... A e and she can slow you down to the point where you cannot hit your q yeah you cannot do anything and it's like sure you hit your bubble but it doesn't even do anything um if you do manage to get an e on her and you want to qr from far away you can but she can just cleanse it and potentially kill you if you don't have cleanse so just be careful like you have to be careful of so many factors in this matchup lux definitely wins it um yeah but if the Lux is bad, as most Luxes are, there are not a lot of good Luxes in general that play mid lane. You can probably kill her. Yeah. That's about it. <clears throat> yeah. So we have co actually covered all the champs in the, the guide. So let's go back to the beginning so you guys can see everything. All the way back to the beginning. 
So here's the list. We went over everything. All timestamps will be in the description or in the comments. Um, I just want to say thank you again for Cubic for coming in. Um, no problem. We're also going to be doing other portions of the guide together. And also go check out his YouTube channel. Is it just youtube.com slash Cubic? Um, I think so. Okay, well, his, I know his Twitch is twitch.tv slash Cubic. Mine is Detention LOL. Um, my YouTube channel is just Detention. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys in the next part. Bye. Bye.